Oh, right, no talking. Oh, it's recording. Shh. Right, this is um, D1, summer 2011, one of those graphical questions where they give you the graph and what are you doing there? And, <laughs> and you have to work out the constraints and go from there. So, um, the constraints of a linear programming problem are represented by the graph below. The feasible region is the unshaded region, including its boundaries. Write down the inequality that defines the region. Right, we know how to do this, don't we? We're going to work through them one by one. Um, they, they haven't labelled the lines, so shall we label the lines just so we know what we're talking about when we do it? Let's call them lines P, S, Q, things, and R. I'm not going to use the letter S because it's the first letter of your name, Sam. So uh, line P, that one there, if we focus on line P, uh, well, we need to know its gradient and its y intercept. That's the easy way to start with this. It goes through the origin, doesn't it? What's its gradient? Two. It looks like it, doesn't it? For every, well, for every two, every two is more clearly marked. For every two across, we go up four. So for every one across, we go up two. So its gradient is two. So it's the line y equals two x. But we want to turn this into an inequality. Check a particular value. How would that fit? <coughs> well, well, what have we got here? The point two one. The point two one. Okay, the point two one is clearly on the accept side of that line. So the point two one satisfies it. Okay. Um, if x is two and y equals one, we would have uh, four on that side and one on that side. Four is bigger than that, so it must be. <coughs> that um, 2x is greater than or equal to y. And does that, that kind of feel right? Because that's what we've got in that bit. Okay, the second line I labelled as being line q. That also passes through the origin. Uh, what's the gradient to that one? For every one across, we're going one up. So that's the line y equals x. So as an inequality, which bit do we need? Well, it's the other bit that we're accepting this time. We're accepting the bit above the line, so this one must be y is greater than or equal to x. If in doubt, we can check it for a particular value. We're accepting the point 2, 4. That's on that side of the line. Um, point 2, 4. Yeah, that's the y value is bigger than the x value. Bless you. Ah. Ah. Um, wait, what's the gradient of that one? Minus one. Um, that one doesn't pass through the origin. In fact, it doesn't show us the point that it passes through. Now we've got choices about how we deal with this. We could go back to our y equals m x. Well, y minus y one is m x minus x one. Core one style. Or we could just think, well, hang on. That is at, at seven there. If we go one further along. It's going to hit the y axis at eight, isn't it? So it looks like that was the line y equals minus x plus eight. Um, just when we've got y and x and a number in our inequalities, we normally write them as, as being as x plus y. And then we've got 8 over there. Which side are we shading this? Well, we're accepting, for example, we're accepting the point 2, 2. That's on the accept side of that line. <coughs> plus 2 is 4, which is less than 8. So we must be accepting points that are less than 8. And they are our three inequalities. Um, great. Now the objective is to maximise x equals ny, where n is a positive real valued constant. In the case when n is 2, calculate the values of x and y at the optimal point and this corresponding value of p2. Right. So, uh, so we, we're given to start with that n equals 2. So our function we're trying to maximise is x plus 2y. We have three points on our graph. They've, they've kindly labelled these for us. We've got three points of the origin a and b. The origin we don't need to worry about. We know it's almost trivial that at the origin the, the objective function is zero as well. So that we, we can kind of ignore the origin. The other two points um, well, we need to work out which one of these is going to be the optimal point, don't we? I 
think we could probably get away, especially if it's only two marks, we could get away with reading the point B straight off the graph. It's an easy one to solve anyway. It's the, the point where the line y plus x intersects the point x plus y is equal to 8. And we can read it as being the point 4, 4 from the graph. So let's, let's work with B first. That's the point 4, 4. So P2 at 4, 4 is 4 plus twice 4. So we've got a value of 12 of the objective at that point. The other point, the other point isn't quite as clear on our graph, is it? I think we actually need to algebraically and work out what this point is. It's the point where the line y equals 2x meets the line x plus y equals 8. So that's, that's simultaneous equations. We can combine these and say that x plus 2x is 8, 3x is 8, so x is 8 thirds. If x is 8 thirds, y is twice x, y is 16 thirds. Does that look, that looks right, just less than 3 and just more than 5, there's two values just less than 3, that's about right, and just a bit over 5, yep. Yeah. Um, and so we need to work out the value of P at that point. P2 is X plus uh, 2 times Y. We've got, what, 32 plus X, that's 40 over 3, which is 13 and a third, isn't it? So that was our maximum value. So that's the conclusion we're going to get from this. Therefore, the maximum value of P2 is 13 and a third at the point 8 over 3, 16 over 3. That actually felt like quite a lot of work for our two marks in this, didn't it? And there we go. <coughs> now, now the objective function is going to change. Write down the values of M for which the point A is optimal. Write down the values of M for which the point B is optimal. Okay, this is the stuff that's all about the gradient of our objective function. If I, if I have a line now, now, now that line there, at the moment, I, I don't know what the gradient of that line is, but that line, if that was the objective function, then A would be the maximum point, wouldn't it? And, and if that gradient gets any less than that, as the gradient gets smaller than that, towards the zero and then negative, or the positive, sorry, as that gradient goes around like that, so that, that gradient is increasing all the time, it's going from negative to positive, then A remains the, the optimal solution. And it would continue to remain the optimal solution as that is going to go. Now, if this goes this way, then at that point there, the optimal solution now is B. And as that line becomes steeper, now that, that's negative, so it becomes more negative, B continues to be the optimal solution. So the point at which it changed between A and B being optimal has something to do with, whoops, the point that's round about there. Now if we could work out what value of m gives us that as our gradient of our line, then that's the key to it, isn't it? At that point there, when the optimal when the objective function is like that, <coughs> A and B are both the optimal solution at the same point. Right. So this is what we need to work out. Um, so that happens when, well what's the gradient of that, that function? That uh, function that we had, Pn is x plus my. As we rearrange this, then this says that, that y 
and y is minus x plus pn. That's just, just kind of a rearrangement to that. So y equals minus x over m plus pn over m. Now I'm not really that bothered about what's going on over there. What I care about here is the gradient of this line. So the gradient of the objective function is minus 1 over n. Okay. Right. What did we just say? If that gradient is equal to the gradient of that constraint, then both of them are the maximum points. That currently has a gradient of minus 1, doesn't it? If that gradient changes, if I want A to be the maximum point, then the line has to look like that. Now that gradient there, let's exaggerate that a little bit so we've got a better example of that. What's that? That's about, for every one across, it's going down a half, isn't it? Roughly. So that would be a gradient of minus a half. So what we're saying is if this gradient is bigger than minus 1, then the, the maximum point is at A. What we call to minus 1. If I rearrange that function, the, the negative signs are really quite awkward there, aren't they? And we want to be a bit careful that we don't get confused by them. Um, we multiply both sides by m. That's all right. It's up to you how you feel happiest about changing things here. If we, if we take m to this side and add 1 to both sides, are we happy that it becomes that? It's the same thing as dividing both sides by minus 1, isn't it? So it's at A if M is greater than or equal to 1. It must be then, we've solved the next bit as well, the values for which point B is optimal it must be the other way around, must not it? As, as M went the other way, as our line went the other way, then the optimal solution starts at being at B. Right. That's if the line becomes more negative than there before. Um, so if the, if the gradient of our objective ends up being um, less than minus 1, more negative than that, then that would give us that. So what we can say about the line. It, it is or equal two points, because at the point where n is equal to 1, both of them would be the optimal point. Um, so there we go. Okay. That's, that's the thing to do with those. Whenever you get these, these uh, graphs where the objective function changes in some way, it's about working out the gradient of the objective function and seeing how that relates to your constraints. What's, what's the line on your graph that, that makes the difference between them? And that's the kind of tilting point, that's the key point. Stephen, I'm just wondering, it would work if you use a sort of uh, linear inequality. If you put the maximum point in P at point A, so you're in another point at point A, greater than or equal to the maximum function at B, and the other points would be. Would it work that way? For instance, 4 plus 4a greater than or equal to a over 3 plus a over 3a. You can try it and see if that simplifies to give you that. I'm sure. I think that's what I did. I didn't do that. I did something like 2 times 3. I don't think I got the same answer. 
Just stop me. 